Today, I'm gonna show you how to make some super easy no-sew pillows. I'm gonna show you how to make a really cute sign for your front porch or just really for anywhere in your house. And also, I'm gonna show you how to make a fairy garden house using a funnel, some aluminum foil, and napkins. So let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I think I say this almost every time I make a video, but today's video is a fun one. It's part of the Just Our Imagination playlist, hosted by Rustic and Lace DIY, Kathy Jo DIY, and the guest host this month is Simply Blessed Crap. I'm going to have a link to the channels down below in the description box, and I'm going to have a link to the playlist, and yeah, you're going to get lots of it. So I'm excited to see what everybody else is making with the challenge items because I think it's going to be fun. All right, that's enough just talking about it. Let's be about it and let's get crap. This super easy no sew pillow just needs fabric and fabric glue. That's what I'm using to make it. But I'm going to link Farm Charm Chic's tutorial down below as well so that you can watch her. She goes a little bit more in depth than I do. But you're going to need three panels of material. You're going to need, I'm making an 18 by 18 pillow. So the front panel is going to be 18 by 18, but the back panels are going to be 18 by 15. And so I cut one and then I just use that as a guide to cut the second one. And I'm just using scissors. I, I can't find my fabric scissors. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do with them. So now that that's done, what I like to do is take my little mini press and kind of fold down and press the seam because I feel like this makes it a lot easier when it comes to the gluing part. You're not, you're not having to like hold so much down and worry about it folding over. So now we're going to use, I'm using no sew fabric glue, but you could use liquid stitch. You could even use that web stitching that you just iron on but I glue and I use that fold to keep it so I'm not having to worry about pressing it down and folding as I go it's already folded for me and then I just put the glue there press it down and that's it and so to put these together you're going to put the right side facing up of the 18 by 18 piece and then you're going to put one panel on the bottom half and you see I'm putting a line down there that's creating that seam down there and then you're gonna go on each side and add more glue preferably in frame but <laughs> anyway then I do the other side and I make the seam for the other side as well y'all when I say this is easy I really do mean it is so so easy then to put the second panel on you flip it over and run a seam down the bottom there tack that down and then you do the side seams and that is basically it I let mine dry overnight and then you just turn it right side out and y'all this is probably the easiest no sew pillow you'll ever make and once you get all the corners pushed out it's gonna be ready to stuff I'm taking a pillow that I got ages ago from Hobby Lobby and I'm just kind of squishing that in there. These seams hold up so well. You can wash and dry this pillowcase and not worrying about it coming apart like if you did it with hot glue or something like that. See, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here it is, y'all. So simple, so easy, and totally customizable to your specific decor. I've made a ton of these and they last really well. Now mine tend to get faded just because of where they are on my front porch but they do last really, really well and so affordable to make. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that I have a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. Link is gonna be down below. All right, back to the video. I was gonna make these gnome signs for Easter and I didn't like how they were turning out and it just wasn't quite giving me the vibe that I wanted. So I just took some Rust-Oleum's chalk, ultimate paint in the color linen and painted over it. Because I was gonna use a sign for something else, I had put hot glue in the holes of the sign, and so I'm just taking my little jabber thingy. I don't even know what this is called, but I'm taking that and just trying to get the glue out of two of the holes so that I can hang this up on my front porch. And then I'm going to take a pencil and kind of sketch out what I'm putting on this sign. And since this is kind of a matching sign, I'm taking the other sign, had two of them, <laughs> and I painted over both of them, and I'm going to kind of sketch out so that it it both sides match and I'm using folk art chalk paint in the color maize to paint in 
and I'm making a sun. We recently had the solar eclipse and we had four minutes and eight seconds of totality. And so I had made these two signs to go on my front porch and I just thought I'd share them with you because they're fun and easy to make. And these are kind of mirrored signs. I mean, when you, if you put them together, they're going to make a sun. So I'm just painting the other sign again with that same color of uh, folk art chalk paint in the color maze. Then I'm taking two more colors of yellow and really it doesn't matter what colors you're using. These are the colors I happen to be using, but really any yellow is going to do. And I'm going to be making some sun rays and I'm using, I have a really wide brush there and I didn't have two of those, that same kind of brush. So I'm just taking a smaller brush and then making two lines to kind of make it the same width, I guess. And then I'm kind of just eyeballing it, kind of gauging it with that wide brush to make sure that I have the same amount of distance between, like see right there, okay, yeah, there. So to make sure it's kind of the same distance, but as the sun rays go out, they're kind of further apart at the out, anyway. I, this is not making sense what I'm telling you, but I'm putting the sun rays on. I'm painting the sun rays, that's what I'm doing here. And of course I have to do it for the other side as well. And Again, just the two colors. And the reason I'm using just different colors is because I thought it added more interest, gave it a little bit more depth and dimension to the piece, but it's really not necessary. You could really just use the same color if you wanted to. And y'all, I don't show you every single color, but I just take out all the yellow paint I had on hand, and that's what I'm using for this. And so I decided to add some polka dots. I decided to add like another little stripe of color right there. And then I go in in a minute and I have the, see I'm adding little dots right there. There's no real rhyme or reason. It's just, I thought it looked fun and that's what I decided to do. Because it's Eclipse weekend, I am taking some lyrics from the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun, and I'm putting that on the sign. And I'm just using my Cricut and I'm using some vinyl. And then I use paper transfer tape to transfer it all down. But it's, it's going to say, here comes the sun, and I say, it's all right. And I just thought that'd be a fun sign for, for the eclipse, and um, so I'm just adding it to the sign. This is so simple, so easy, and you really could use, you know, any lyrics you want to. You could use any quote that you want to, just something fun for the front porch, and, and people passing by might go, oh, that's pretty cool. So I have two screen doors that we salvaged from um, a property <laughs> that my son-in-law was working at. And I put one on one side and I put the other on the other side. But I just think it looks fun. And I used kind of a 70s style font. I think it was called Groovy. And I like, I just, well, actually, I really love how it looks. We're painting the church pew. So the bottom part of the church pew is not brown yet. But I just wanted to give it a different color. And so this is kind of how it looks on the front porch. Not everything is on the front porch yet that I usually put out there. So this is how one side looks and this is how the other side looks. So like I said, I just think it turned out super cute and I really love it. Okay. For our final DIY, let's head to Dollar Tree because I need to pick up some supplies for the just our imagination playlist. We were supposed to pick up some aluminum foil. Well, I guess you could have used what you had on hand, but I needed to use aluminum foil and a funnel. And I, this came in a set of three and I'm gonna use the smallest one for the project. And we needed to use some napkins. Now I bought these napkins thinking I was gonna use them, but I ended up not. Um, and I picked up <laughs> those little flamingo ones because I'm gonna be using those in an upcoming video. What I did end up using is the, this kind of napkin. I actually had some at home, so I didn't buy these but this is the kind of napkin that I used. All right, so for this section here, I'm just basically trying to see what fits together, how I'm gonna connect things. I had an idea in my mind. I had sketched out a couple ideas. I saw a couple of pictures. So I'm just trying to think like, okay, hey, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna bring this to like, you know, real life? And so I had the lid to that round box and I had a ribbon spool thing and I took a toilet paper tube and I glued it inside the ribbon spool and I had glued that to the top of the box. And I'm just using some of that clear 
glue, I think it's Elmer's glue, but it might be jock glue or whatever from Dollar Tree to kind of help also secure it. And then I have traced out where, you know, I'm connecting the box to the toilet paper tube. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like think about this. But then I took some E6000 and that's how I'm going to attach the funnel to the top of the box. Just like that. All right, once that's done, I need to make a staircase. Now, this actually ends up falling off later at a later point, but I'm trying to make kind of like a spiral staircase because I thought that would look more interesting. And I'm just using those large clamps that I got from Dollar Tree to kind of hold things together as they're gluing. And I needed to be a little bit more patient and maybe kind of plan it out differently, but in the end it works fine. So again, just a little bit further along in the process, you can see the staircase kind of winding down and it, it works fine. But like I said, maybe if I had kind of planned it out a little bit better, I could have made the staircase a little bit easier to make on my end. I mean, on my end, like somebody else is making it, but I'm just saying like the way I put it together might have been easier if I just put it together, then attached it to the house, which I end up doing because it falls off. Now let's take that foil. And what I'm doing is just kind of, kind of rolling it up, you see, and then twisting it because I want it to look like vines or like, tree branches that are growing on a tree not not out from a tree but just kind of like maybe like in an enchanted forest or something they just look like <laughs> i'm not exactly sure what they look like right now but that was my idea just to kind of roll it up and then twist it and you see that u-shaped one there that's going to be where the door is and so i'm just trying to position it where the staircase comes up and see, I think the staircases look pretty cute, but it falls off later. Anyway, I am just using hot glue to attach the foil to the round um, box thing, as well as to the um, plastic funnel. And it actually sticks pretty well. Like, I don't have any problem. It's, well, so far, I've not had any problems with it popping off or loosening up or anything like that. But I'm just trying to make random vine tree branch things. I don't want it to look just all uniform. So once I have that done, now I'm going to take the napkins and I'm just cutting them in strips. And then I end up separating them for the most part because they were naturally separating. So, um, it, what I'm going to do is kind of decoupage on top. I, I mean, it, it might've been better if I used a different glue, but I just used Mod Podge and I was decoupaging the um, <laughs> napkins onto the tree house, fairy tree house thing. And what, in hindsight, if you tried to do this at home, I would recommend using multiple layers of the tissue of the, of the napkin because it just wasn't thick enough. Like you, later on, I just it just was not thick enough. And sometimes the tin foil was showing through or aluminum foil was showing through, but I just go around and add that clean, uh, I keep on saying Kleenex or tissue. I'm adding the napkin all over the project. And then I think I got it pretty covered, but I, again, I'm adding some more to the bottom and I'm just using that paintbrush to put the Mod Podge on. I add the napkin and kind of press it in if I need to. I add multiple napkins or pieces of the napkin in some places, but I don't do it all over. And really, I think it would have been a much better result if I had done it all over multiple layers of the napkin. Then you can see I have about, I don't know, six or nine different colors of brown. And I'm just taking that dauber brush that I got from Dollar Tree and I am just sponge painting it on. There's not really any rhyme or reason to the color. I am trying to make sure that there's different colors. That it's not just all a plain flat brown, but I'm just adding. And then I'm kind of using the sponge to be able to get into some of the crevices because, you know, there's crevices. <laughs> so, and I was wanting to paint and they're not really see white. But I did notice that on some areas, 
the paint was not sticking as well as it could. And I think that's because there wasn't enough of the napkin covering the foil. I don't know. It could just be that's just how it worked out. But I felt like if I'd put another layer of the napkin on there, that would have helped a lot more. And by this time, you, you would have seen that the staircase fell off. So I'm taking, again, just various colors of brown, and I'm painting the staircase. To me, it didn't need to be one single color because if it's out in the woods, it would be exposed to different elements in my mind. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And so it would have different colors, different wear, different, you know, things like maybe moss grown on it or something like that. So I was just trying to give it a varied look. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, what does this have? Like sometimes my videos don't necessarily all go together. So it's like not one theme, but anyway. I wanted to participate in this one and here we are. So I am just using various colors of green and I'm really trying to focus on that darker green and I'm going over all the tree branches and I'm painting them green. I guess more like they're vines or something growing all around this fairy house. And I did paint the inside of the, you know, quote unquote doorway black to kind of signify that that was the doorway. And y'all, seriously, my voice, <laughs> I think I'm getting sick again. But now I'm taking some, I had some greenery that I can't remember where I got it from, probably Hobby Lobby. But I am using that to attach it to the this top part of the funnel to make it kind of like a chimney, but also just kind of like part of the fairy house. And I'm taking those leaves off and just gluing them all around with hot glue. And be careful with hot glue because hot glue is hot. Now, once I got to the top, I took a little, a different kind of pick and I'm going to stick it in the top. <laughs> so this will be my little topper for this fairy garden house. And I'm going to attach the staircase back and I'm going to use, I'm just going to use hot glue and I'm adding it right back there, pressing it, holding it down. And then I have another piece of, I think I show you all this. Well, maybe I don't, but I had another piece of black. I don't show it to you. I had another piece of black, like a little scrap piece of wood that I used as the base to that. And now I'm adding some of that reindeer moss that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just adding it all around the base of this. And I'm going to add it to a bunch of the crevices as well. Like I said, I just think it makes it look interesting looks interesting to me <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it and I'm kind of focusing on some of the crevices just kind of filling it in so you don't hopefully you don't see any of the tin foil or any of the tissue or napkin see I want to call it tissue but y'all this is how it turned out I think it looks so cute I do feel like I need to add a little bit more some more elements to it but I really just like in general how it looks. I love to make fairy things. I love fairy gardens and I'm getting a little bit of a collection of ones that I've made and I hope to be able to put them in my backyard at some point, but I just love how it turned out. So, and to think this was made with aluminum foil, napkins, and a plastic, um, what do you call it? Plastic, um, not pine cone. Oh my gosh. Plastic funnel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. You need to let me know which one of these projects that I did today was your favorite in the comments below. Thank y'all so, so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate it. I've hit over 7,000. I'm on my way to 10,000. And um, I couldn't get there without y'all liking and subscribing and sharing my content. And yeah, I think that's it. So if you want to follow me like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or something like that, my handle is Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye. Yeah, Socks is right there. Can you see him? Bye.